Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this morning study. Now we're going to continue in Judges chapter 5, um, 14 to 31. But before we do, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have each morning. And as we continue to pick our way through your word, searching for precious gems, uh, we ask, Lord, that we can see the big picture of what these things mean and that um, we can apply these truths to our present situation. We pray for each person in the struggles that they face, the trials that they face, face because of their faith. And um, we ask, Lord, that you can strengthen them through your spirit, that your angels can watch over them. We know there's many people in this world who can feel the conviction of your word, but who have not the strength and have not depended upon you, trusted in you. And we just pray, Lord, that um, we can be an influence for those people, that they can see that there's nothing in this world and that everything comes from Christ. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. Now, um, yesterday we had gone through the Judges, verse 14, and started looking at verse 15. Now, <clears throat> So the question that we have, is there enough for us to place Judges 14 as a waymark? And we would say the first angel arriving, and where would we place that? Because that's what we were, we were trying to address. Now... One of the things we said, you know, we don't particularly have a period of darkness um, expressed here. But we do in verse 13. That is, it talks about him that remaineth, the remnant, right? So the remnant are those that survive after there's a separation, right? And it says, then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. So how would we reference this? And then verse 14, out of Ephraim, there was a root of them against Amalek. After the Benjamin among thy people, out of Akir came down governors, and out of Zebulun they that handled the pen of the writer. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Issachar also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. So how are we going to place this on these lines? Well. Step back on to verse 13 for a second. Yeah. Okay. So in verse 13, that's the one that says, Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. So okay. there's, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so you have first, you have this doubling of dominion. Yeah. But you also have this situation with him that remaineth. Right. And the word uh, remaineth here is a survivor, uh, left, remain, remnant, rest. Now, an odd situation, which may or may not apply here, is that's from the Strong's Hebrew, he 8300. Right? Yeah, yeah 8,300. And one way that you can get to 8,300 is 6,000 plus 2,300. Okay. 
Yeah. So those that remaineth, can it be said that these are the ones that are willing, willingly able to study the 2300 day message? Because they they are left as a survivor. And this word is drawn from Hebrew 8277. Seven two eighty seven. No, Hebrew eight two seven seven. Oh, um, oh, I see what you're talking about. The word uh, remaineth. Right. So I'll read. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> we have here, of course, the doubling which we have been applying to the second angel's message. And they have dominion over the nobles among the people and made me have dominion over, as it says, over the mighty. Over the powerful tyrants, champions or chiefs. So. Is this a reference, again, to putting the understanding that the Millerite had back into the world's eye? Okay. Well, I don't know if I quite... Um... Okay, so, I mean, just on the surface, we have this verse 13. Right. And, and we know 13 represents rebellion, right? And, and we can see that this is where we have this separation in, in the movement, right? That is where, where I'm taking this is it's bringing us to 11.9. Uh, right? That's how I understand it. Um, that is, it's going back because we know that this, uh, the song of Deborah and Barak is uh, covering this, this period from November 9 to January 11th. And, but then we say that this section, chapter 5, verse 14 to 31, is a repeat of that history. And, and the reason why it's repeating it is it's giving us another take on that history, how that history is repeated, right? That is, what happened, we had the situation at the beginning of that, this darkness had to do with uh, Parminder's message, right? And the song of Deborah and Barak, um, addressed the Levitical chiasm, just as, as Deborah and Barak, the line of Deborah and Barak addressed the Levitical chiasm. And, and then the song of Deborah and Barak is us basically studying that history, right? We understand the Levitical chiasm. I, I use that, I, that, that structure and that understanding that was given to us on November 9th. To tell Jeff that July 18th is going to possibly fail. It's on a line of failed predictions. He ignores that. We have a disappointment on July 18th. And that, that's chapter 5, verse 10. That's going to give us the 10th day of the 5th month. When certain of the elders of Israel come and sit before Ezekiel. Right? And so, so that is what is studied, is the message of Ezekiel after the disappointment of July 18th. Right. So the 10th day, of the fifth month. And then we go through, we rehearse or examine the foundations. And then when we get to December 25th, 2021, we have this uh, empowerment of this message because of the 777 structure. 
And then we have this one year period to January 11th, 2023, that is 383 deficient days uh, or deficient embolism. So 383 days. And uh, so when we get to January 11th, 2023, that is a close of probation in a sense on that line. So now we're saying that this is illustrating this close of probation within this movement um, that we are now experiencing. But when we take this line, it's gonna obviously go back like all lines do and cover this history and show how what happened in the past is now, um, was illustrating what's happening now, right? So we have to say that whatever this verse 13 is talking about, it has to be introducing us to the period, to the, to the darkness that is then going to be addressed by the first angel's message arriving in verse 14. And so all I'm saying about this verse that it should be telling us is that there has been a separation in the movement, right? And, and that's him that remaineth will have dominion over the nobles among the people. So there's a remnant that ends up with dominion over the nobles among the people. And Deborah saying, the Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. So we have to look at what that verse is saying. There definitely is symbols in these numbers. Um, I have a different symbol for 8,300, but, um, you know, anyway, we have all these different numbers. Primarily, we've, we've looked at, uh, you know, the numbers. We've looked at the gematria of verses. We've looked at the meanings of names. Um, now, when it said when it uh, um, Deborah, whose Hebrew number is one six eight three, we can see that she's going to have dominion over the mighty, which is one three six eight. So that three is moved in there, whatever that means, right? But we, we could look at that point. We also have nobles is eleven seven. So we know 11 times 17 is 187. 11 times uh, uh, 7 is 77. Um, so I think that this relates to uh, our history. But if we're going to mark where that period of darkness is, the question is, can we take verse 14 and put it, do we put it at November 9th or do we put it at something like January 11th, 2023? Do we continue this on? Is this line going to go back someplace in this line? Or is it just going to continue on? Because Judges 5, verse 14 to 31 is the fourth angel arriving. And, and we're zooming in. We're going to create a waymark. But that waymark is going to be typified by what happened before. <clears throat> Does that help, Dwight, to, to show you what I'm thinking? It helps a bit, yes. Okay. So I don't know if I would take that 83 as, you know, 6,000 and 2,300. I don't know if that has anything to do with it at this point. Um, you know, we just look at what the verse is talking about. We know there there is a doubling. It mentions dominion twice. But it's also a parallelism. Right. Okay, then, he, so. then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. So it's a parallel structure. So it's a line upon line. And, and so it's comparing two different lines. All right. So we know him that remaineth that to me that would refer to November 9th because the separation that happens there. But now we have Deborah, which we say represents the school of the prophets. 
right? Because of the B and North Bumblebee Road. So, so as a message, what is Deborah? How have we understood her as a message? Like what is the specific message that we get from the school of the prophets that we're applying to this line? First and second angel's message. Well, in this line, because we have a specific message that Deborah comes to address, right? A, a specific issue, right? So the issue had to do with Cicero. Right. Right. And so if we focus at the on the school of the prophets, we know at the school of the prophets, we, uh, before we had the school of the prophets, I mean, we had Lambert Church and we had FFA, but then they, they built the school of the prophets. Right. And that's going to be in 2000. And well, I guess technically verse third uh, in, uh, 2014 and, and 2000, well, 2013, 2014. I don't know. I think they started in Jeff's house technically in 2013. Is that correct? Anybody know about the school? Uh, Might have been 2000. I know in 2012 he was talking about starting the school. So I think that they had Tyler, uh, Brittany, and Michael as students in 2013. Sounds familiar. Right. And 2014, anyway, I met them in the fall because I was at the camp meeting in 2014. And I believe that they had at least gone through, uh, you know, a couple of uh, trimesters. So I don't know if they had done a whole year by that point or not. But anyway, um, so we get this. Uh, Deborah, so Deborah, she arose, or, or she, she calls this message to awake. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song. So she, she is told to wake up. And, um, and then arise Barak and lead thy captivity captive, the son of Abinoam. So we place that at uh, December 25th, 2021. So we applied this to our movement there. So Deborah, who is this, this message from the School of the Prophets, which is at the end of that 777 days, this message is given, right? And then January 11th, it says, He that made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people, and the Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. So that brings us to December 11th, 2023. So the question is, when we take this next line, which is the arrival of the fourth angel, do we just start there or do we go back over this history of this movement? Does this line cover again the same material that we had? And since verse 13 is a parallelism, um, and it's talking about those that remain, but then it goes back. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. So there's this word dominion um, that's running parallel. Now that word means uh, to tread down, that is sub subjugate, specifically to crumble off, have dominion prevail against, reign, bear, make rule of life. Uh, so, so what is that referring to? It's rural dominion. Uh, let me see here. Rada. To scrape out, tread down. Yeah. 
because this is conquering a message, which is the message of Parminder. So, so one of the things that um, that we have been saying through these studies in Judges, and even before that, even in in the Book of Joshua, um, is that we have left over from the Adventist Church, and also left over from Parminder's teaching ideas that have. Um, affected this movement. Now, some people are quite offended by that. Because they take it as if we're saying that they're teaching the same things as Parminder, um, which I've been accused of teaching Parminder's teachings, but I've never accused anybody of doing that. I'm just saying that we're affected by some of the things that Parminder taught that is, we haven't examined them and removed them from our thinking. One is how he looks at the lines, right? So if we haven't spent time understanding the lines, if we still have Parminder's understanding of the lines, if we're still talking about priest Levites and Methanims as three different lines, then we're infected by Parminder's teaching. I can't see why they'd be off offended by that because it's true. Yeah. And then the other aspect is, and it's not particularly just Parminder's problem. It's been a problem of this movement is the idea of criticism, right? So that is to hear rumors and gossip and judge a message based upon what we've heard about a person, not what they're actually teaching and not addressing it directly right so this is a problem this is a habit that this movement has which is a habit that human beings have right it's 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 laziness spiritual laziness somebody has an idea you know somebody's presenting something let's say we hear somebody's talking about this thing called the 2520 and people tell us oh they're time setters right and they're teaching all kinds of error or they're um, they're shepherd's rod or they're lunar sabbatarians or something like that. And we just don't even bother actually look, it, looking into what these people are talking about. And we condemn them and we shun them and we spread stories and gossip about them. We're doing a work that is not the work of God. It's the work of Satan. It's the, the accuser of the brethren, right? And this, movement has, and this movement's been infected by that, Right. <clears throat> It's something that we've inherited. So we've inherited things from the Adventist church that have still been in this movement all this time. And Parminder, his message sort of embodies that, right? I mean, he embodies uh, the Adventist church, this papal spirit uh, coming into this movement, trying to control what's being taught, you know, the biblical, whatever they call it, the, doctrinal analysis group you know they create this doctrinal analysis group they set up these elders in an organization to try to control what's happening and so this movement's been infected by that and 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 that shouldn't be offensive i mean we should recognize it but people are offended by it because we don't want to look at our own problems right so here we have this, this verse 13, we have this parallel. Um, and it just says, then he that he made him that reigneth. So I'm not sure who the he is. It could refer to the message of Barak, because it says, arise Barak and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Then, made, ma then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. And, and so this wouldn't just be a parallelism then. These two verses would be a mirror because you're going to have Deborah mentioned first in verse 12 and last in verse 13. 
and Barak second in verse 12 and first in verse 13. So you could say, awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty, right? So her song, her message is her having dominion over the mighty. And then arise Barak and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Obinoam. Then made then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles. So that's what Barak does. So the message of Barak and the message of Deborah go together, but they're different messages. And so what are those messages? How have we understood why there's a Deborah and why there's a Barak? Well, if we take this back down to a, a method that we, we've used in the past, is Deborah representing the religious portion and Barak more of a civil portion? Okay, so yeah, so we sometimes have done that here, um, you know, because we have male and female, so that could be uh, religious and civil. Um, though it doesn't seem to be that way here, in the sense that the message of Deborah is referring to the school of the prophets, right? So we would have to see what that message is that the school of the prophets has. As why why this message is connected with the school of the prophets. Well, I'm <clears throat> and then Barak we know represents specifically a chronological message dealing with the calendars, because his his number is one three zero one, and we know that that is if you multiply that by a thousand, that's the number of days, one million three hundred and one thousand, the number of days from when we get the first day of the first month in 1533 BC, the first time we get the first day of the first month, to the first day of the first month in 2030, which has been this date that is witnessed to in so many different ways. And it's connected to, of course, the symbols of July 18, 2020, as well as um, uh, the story of Ezra 7 to 10. So the message of Barak specifically refers to chronology. So I don't see how that can refer to civil. No, okay. I'm making an application because in this in this situation, you have Deborah and Barak, female and male. Yeah. Now what is it that determines our fitness for heaven? I know that might sound strange at this point, but isn't it our <clears throat> is it not our character? Yes. Okay. Now, is Deborah representative of the internal portion, the religious portion, that which we believe in our heart, and Barak representative of what we present to the world or the external portion. Well, I don't see that in, in this story. Um, One of the comments from the chat gave the application with what we're what we we're just looking at to apply that <clears throat> with Proverbs sixteen thirty two. Okay. And Proverbs sixteen thirty two. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. So 
the slow to anger portion being the internal ruleth his spirit being the external. Because <clears throat> Barack was unwilling to go forward without the assistance. And so the glory was not given to Barack, right? Right. It's going to be given to the wife of JL. Or, so, or JL it's going to be given to JL, uh, the wife of Eber. Okay. Again, the glory was given to a religious symbol rather than a civil symbol. Okay. But to me, I mean, you could apply that. All I'm saying is that that's not the primary way that we would look at Barack is that it's civil. I, I'm aware that's not the primary way, but here again, aren't we supposed to examine everything? Right. Yeah. So what I would say that, the, that what we could gather from there then is just simply that this is about a religious, a personal religious experience, not about an org organizational structure. I would agree with that. Yeah. So because one of the things we have in, in this whole story is this battle for these institutions. That's Parminder's message, the battle for control. And what we're saying is that God is in control. We don't need an organization. You know, we don't need. Um, you know, because part of the problem that we have in this movement is we have like the American group and the Canadian group and we have our group. And, and this is my observation, basically, is that both the American and the Canadian group have exercised control in what is being said, who is speaking. They're not allowing an open discussion. Right? I agree. 110%. And we, and we, and we have demonstrated that we can have an open discussion. I can ask... Uh, call in a, a few questions and people don't want me to speak. But we had Bonnie speaking for, well, at least three hours in our study. And we didn't shut her down. Right? No, we, we did not. We addressed everything that she was asking from the Bible, made no attack upon on her character or anybody's character. Because that is not how we do things if we're going to be following the counsel that's given in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Now, I want to address another thing here that we see in Proverbs 16. And it's in Proverbs 16.29. So remember, we get this symbol of 16.29. Uh, from where? Where did we get this symbol, 16.29? What is that symbol? Uh, I have 1629, but I do not have what it is. Okay. So it came from Odilio's study. Right. So that's the February 12th, 22 study. That says. Okay. And, and this number, you can do things with it. Like if you add 391, you get 2020. And... Um, Um, I can't remember what the other things are. Uh, Adil Aran, do you remember what Adilio's, um, the different mathematical calculations? Anyway, the number came from the mandates. Right. So it's looking at these these dates and and it also was connected. Um, 
to to our to our message to the July 18 study and everything that was done there. I just can't remember the different calculations for it. But um, Odilio had used uh, number 1629 dealing with um, if I remember here, number 1629. Um, right, so he was saying if they die, uh, the death of um, all that pertain unto, uh, where is it here? Um, the common death of all men, if they, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. So if they die natural, natural death, now, of course, this is talking about uh, uh, the rebellion of Korah, right? So this is just, they're going to be swallowed up by the earth. So I don't really know why that would apply. And then the other was, I believe, Exodus 16.29. So he had looked at these verses, uh, 16.29. See, for the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he has given you the sixth day, the bread of two days. Now, this has to do with... Um, the manna, right? Right. When they first give the manna. And we know that that symbol, the four, 494 months, the 2,084 weeks, the 1,487 uh, or 88 days, depending how you count it, um, that that period of time becomes significant in our lines. Now, the other verse that they didn't look at was Leviticus 16.29. And Leviticus 16.29 is, um, and this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, in the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls. Right? So this is going to be addressing the Day of Atonement. And so he should have looked at this 16.29 as well to understand what the symbol that he had what it meant. But we also have uh, Proverbs 16.29, right? And of course, Proverbs is addressing symbols, right? A proverb is like a story or an illustration that illustrates something. Now here it says, uh, a violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way now we've had this this idea of leading halak which is 1980 and the way 1870 derek we've had those in the book of judges right we've already had these this expression uh in judges chapter uh which verse is it um Oh, yeah, and it's 360 plus 1629 is 1989. And um, 1629 plus what? Uh, 360. 360. 360, okay. Yeah. And let me see here. So the way that's going to be judges. Uh, I mean, the way is such a common phrase. Whatever it was. Right? I'm trying to find this, but I can't find it. Is it in chapter five or chapter four? Um, there must be ways. I don't see it.
I know we have the word. Uh, I just don't see it here. Um, chapter four. I thought it was though in chapter five. Uh, Judges five ten about walk walking by the way is that yeah there it is for? so why it doesn't show up in the the Strong's concordance I don't know yeah there, there it is so we just had it in five ten speak ye that ride on white asses ye that sit in the judgment and walk by the way right so we have that in Proverbs sixteen twenty nine. So, so here we have it uh, addressed again in this verse. Now it's here, it's leadeth him into the way rather than walketh by the way. Now, and remember, we looked at 1980. So 1980 is August 11th, 1980, right? And that, if you count from, from that date, the date I was converted, the number of days that the manna fell, you come to July 18, 2020, right? Which is the way. Oh, July 18, 1870. So this right. is with the manna. And it's in Leviticus 16, 29, that it talks about the manna, the first day the manna falls. Okay? So you can see the connection. So, so if we talk about this 1629, uh, it talks about a violent man that enticeth his neighbor. Um, now, this word is kind of, it means often to deceive, entice, flatter, persuade. Uh, it comes from, it's pata, which means to open. Right, often to open the eyes and things like that. You can run into that word there, but it means roomy, that is causatively to make roomy, usually figuratively in a mental or moral sense, to be simple in a, in a sinister way, that is delude, allure, deceive, right? Now it says a violent man, violent here, um, uh, that is somebody who has, uh, it can refer to violence, but usually it's it's cruel or to cause dam damage or false. So you could say a false man deceives his neighbor and leadeth him into a way that is not good, right? Now, this, in, in the context here, um, if we're dealing with this 1629 and what we're seeing here in, in Judges, um, what is this referring to? Those who use craft to mislead folks. But I'm noticing okay. the H six six one, and that, and then we have the six six one for FFA. Yes. Yeah, so you got FFA here, entice. So. Now, so when we look at this, we can look at these symbols here. Um, and and we're we're trying to address this this movement. Um, but can people mislead? Like who is misleading? Who is this violent man that is deceiving his neighbor? I mean, and we have these symbols here. We have the symbol of the falling of the man, and we have the symbol of July 18th. And uh, how would we apply this then in the context of what we've been looking at in Judges chapter 5? Because we say there's a remnant, right? In, in when we get to verse 13, 
there's a remnant that is um, Barak is going to have he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. And the Lord made me, Deborah, have dominion over the mighty. And I'm saying that this is relating to 1629. Now, we had looked at 1632. That's why we ended up at 1629. So what is this? What information is this giving us? I think it has a lot to do with the fall of FFA when they reneged on everything they'd been taught and they made it very clear December 6th, 2020. Okay, so it would re relate to that, but it's relating more specifically to what, um, what has continued since then, right? Because I've made the statement, another offensive statement, as I've said that there are many in this movement who still believe or agree with the December 6, 2020 declaration. Now, when I say they agree with it, I don't say they agree with all of it, but they have sympathies with it in, in how they act and behave, right? So one of the things that we should have learned from that December 6, 2020 declaration is that we are not the arbiters of what is true, of what people can study. Right. Yes. Out loud. Correct. Yeah. So now somehow when I disagree with people. Yes. People will say that I'm somehow trying to control what other people think. But is that. Is, is explaining. That's why not a reasonable people, assessment. That no. is not a reasonable assessment. Now, if you ask a question, it's like, who are you to tell me what to think? Well, I'm not telling anybody what to think. You're asking questions. I'm studying, right? That's what we're supposed to do, to study. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So, but if I was to shut down the conversation, like if I was to say, you know, Colin and Odilio and the Canadian American group, they're all in apostasy. Nobody listened to what they have to say. Uh, cut off all communi communication with them. If they come onto our study, don't let them speak. Uh, we're going to have a camp meeting to not invite them. That would be doing that. That's the worldly way of dealing with things. Right. But I say we all need to come together and That's study. The FF. Yeah. Now, the other thing is people say, and, and Colin has said this, basically is, is just, I know so much that people, basically, the implication is that they can't contend with what I understand, which I think is pretty insulting. <laughs> That's the kind of attitude that I, I felt from him. Yeah. It's like, well, we can't argue with you because you're always going to defeat us. Right? You know, you're always going to come up with something that we don't know about. And we, can't, we can't basically argue with you. Now that's happened my whole life, right? So, so what is that saying about them? They're not willing to. Well, learn yeah. Or challenge but, themselves. But the point is, I'm willing to to discuss anything and be open minded if somebody has a good argument, right? This is not about controlling what other people think, right? It's not about me having other people agree with me. That can't be how you come to understand truth. You understand truth. The reason you share things is you want people to challenge them. You want somebody to say, hmm, you know, you made this statement, but here is why I think that statement isn't correct. Now, to me, that's, that's a normal way of communicating. I know some people don't like to be told that something they said is incorrect. Right? They, they don't want to be corrected, which I don't understand, but I guess I could understand it on some level. Nobody likes to be wrong. But if you don't want to be wrong, the simple thing to do is be corrected. Because if you can 
be corrected, then you will no longer be wrong. Right, that, that to me would be the simple solution. But the point that we have here is we have this type of deception that, that we see. So when we look at this Proverbs uh, 1629, what we see is a violent man. Now, it says, a violent man enticeth his neighbor. Now, when it says, and leadeth him into a way that is not good, we have these symbols here of that, that we see in Judges 5. Now, we know in Judges 5, these symbols are good things, right? But can good things be used to deceive people? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> it's right. part of the game plan for Satan. Yeah. So so what ends up happening is is people will for unjust reasons, right? Unjust gain, for jealousy, for unrighteousness. For wrong reasons, they're going to misuse these symbols that that God has given us. And that's because their intentions are bad. Right now, we see that that word enticeth is connected with FFA. So what we wouldn't do is we wouldn't say FFA has been deceiving, you know, with the July 18, 2020 message. Right. I mean, somebody might look at this verse and if they used all of our symbolism, they could say, well, this is speaking about you guys. You're the ones that are deceiving. So they could say that. But we can just see by how we're approaching this topic that there are those who are going to use truth, but it's going to lead people astray. And that's just because of their intentions. And, and our intentions are, are really the most important thing when it comes to whether we're going to be uh, convicted and converted because of truth or whether we're going to go into darkness. Our intentions show our character. Right. Right. Yeah. So this is about character. Right. That's that's what we're seeing here is that even with um, even with the truth. A person can use the truth to deceive. Right. So when we go back to Judges chapter five. And we look at what we're what we're studying here. We have this, this message, and we could go all the way back, you know, to verse uh, 10, because it's going to talk about he that sitteth in judgment when walketh by the way. Speak ye that walk, ride on white asses that sit in judgment and that walketh by, and walk by the way. They are delivered from the noise of the archers. That's July 18th. And in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. That's what we've been doing. Um, even the righteous acts towards his villages. And the word villages there is magistry or leadership in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates, right? And, and we're, we're going to have that, that going down to the gates is this battle over this message. And then in this battle over this message, we have two messages that are presented, Deborah, and, and Deborah is 1683, 168 times 3 is 504, that's 2 times 252, that represents the prophetic mirror, this represents the truths that have come from the school of the prophets, and we have this doubling, awake, awake, and it's doubled again, awake, awake, utter a song, Now, the word utter is just the normal word debar. It means to speak, right? Uh, a song is shi shiri or shira. Um, just means singing or musical, right? And so there's this song. Um, and then there's this arise, kum. Right? Arise, barak. Utter a song, arise. So utter a song is for Deborah. 
Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Right? So we have these, these two messages. We say that Barak, because of his name, this is going to represent the chronology, specifically the detailed chronology of the first day of the first month, because it goes with the calendars, right? And then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles. And so there we have July 18th as a symbol, 11, 7, just as like 1, 1, 17. Um, what, 11 times 7 is 77 among the people. Um, and, and the Lord made me, that's Deborah, have dominion over the mighty, right? And so this word dominion is to tread down. So, so something about this movement is being illustrated by these messages that refer to um, a victory over error, right? And that error is the error of Sisera. But that error still remains in the movement, Right. That's that's what we know. So the question is, then, when we get to verse 14, where is this battle happening? Do we go back to these older battles to start this way, Mark, or do we start this way, Mark? In the present time. That's the question, because we want to know where to place this way, Mark, and we want to know what that darkness is that and what the message is that that's addressing that darkness i know this is is taking a long time but you see how we're working through this absolutely uh, methodically yeah and and so we have all of these different symbols so um and i don't know if i even remember because i worked this out this morning but um We're, we're, these two verses, 14 and 15, at least go together. It might, we might add verse 16. Um, but out of Ephraim, there was a root of them against Amalek. And after the Benjamin uh, among the people, out of Maker came down governors, and out of Zebulun, they that handled the pen of the writer. Now, we had looked at some of the uh, gematria of these different names, Right. So we had put in, for instance, uh, Ephraim. And when we looked at Ephraim, the reverse sum of Ephraim was 11.9. And then we put in, uh, was it, well, I can't remember if we did Benjamin, but let's put in Benjamin. And the reverse sum of Benjamin is uh, 149, but also the combined is 216. So you get this symbol of this 6 times 6 times 6. Um, when we put in, uh, we could put in Maker if we wanted to. Makir is 52. That's the normal sum. The reverse sum is 110. That's the... 10th day of the first month. You put them together, they're 162. They have all the digits of the 126 or the 216. Again, you get that symbol of the Sunday law if you rearrange them, and the 126. And then with Zebulun, you're also going to get, uh, I believe, the 119 symbol. Was it Zebulun? No. Zebulun was 88, was the reverse sum. And also you get the normal sum is 10-1, another symbol of the uh, first day of the 10th month. Could also be the 10th day of the first month. Uh, the differential between them is 13. So that's a symbol for July 18, 2020. Um, and... Now, Mekir is also out of Manasseh, right? He's from the tribe of Manasseh. 
and Manasseh, the combined uh, gematria is 216. That's the reverse and the normal sum put together. So we have that again. And then you have um, Issachar. And Issachar, the combined gematria, is also 216. So we keep, keep getting these symbols of 216 in different ways. It's also his normal sum is 78. We know 78 times 24 is 1872. Okay, so, so what does that mean? So we have this, the primary symbol that shows up, there's two symbols, 11.9 and 2.16. We also get a lot of 135s in and different combinations of those numbers, as well as 189, which I'm not sure what that means. Um, <clears throat> so what do we do with this? What do we do with these verses, 14, 15? And, and we also have verse 16, why abodest thou among the sheepfolds? Yeah, 216 refers to Samuel Snow as well. And also being dropped from the three angels message notifications on February 16th. Okay. Um, now we have 14, 15, and 16. Can we put these together? Why would we put verses 14, 15, 16 together? And the question, why abodest thou among the sheepfolds? to hear the bleedings of the flocks for the divisions of Reuben were, were great searchings of heart. Anybody know what I'm thinking or does anybody see something here? Well, the alternate Hebrew for that for 16. Yeah. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleatings of the flocks? In the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. So, Reuben as a symbol is one that was not worthy of receiving the blessing of the firstborn. And don't you think that he had to search his heart quite a bit when this occurred? Okay. Now, in, in following through everything else that, that you're looking at, the divisions <clears throat> that the translators would have had would have encompassed from verses 14 down to verse 18. Okay. So, so Gilead abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeopardied their lives unto death, unto the death in the high places of the field. Right. So it's going to mention all these tribes in that section. Right. So we can 14 to 18 then. Here again in 17, you have <clears throat> Alternate Hebrew, Gilead abo abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seaport and abode in his creeks. Okay, so rather than breaches. 
And then 18, Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that exposed to reproach unto the death in the high places of the field. Now, are all of these verses cumulatively going to be indicative of a time of darkness? Okay, so maybe you're saying that we should take this as the period of darkness in this line. Correct. Okay, that might make more sense. Um, it sounds like they aren't together. Yes, and and also um, a lot of the symbols here, they point us back to the period from 11-9, and bring us to December 25th, 2021. So, and that makes sense based upon what we've seen with these lines that um, it, it's going to repeat this history. So this song of Deborah and Barak is, is addressing this history and we're addressing these tribes that are not, they're not united, right? In, in their, their fight against the enemies, right? Some of them don't really come to the battle. They're involved in their own situation. Um, we're only going to have uh, basically uh, Zebulun and Naphtali join in this battle against Sisera. See, when you were when you were asking the question about 216, 216. Yeah. I'm very familiar with the, you know, the symbol of the 217. Yeah, that's that's July 21st. Yeah. Correct. But we've also made the application that that's that is another symbol of midnight. Right. But now 216 is a symbol of the Sunday law. Right. But it's but, also from Samuel Snow's letters, February 6, uh, 16. But would since right. since we would look at this, or I would be looking at this in a progression, is the 216 then followed by a period of midnight for those that are not have not been willing to study? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, well, I think that that definitely, in, in any line, those are connected. Midnight and the Sunday law. Okay, now we've just had two questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, so the questions there, does 101 mean first day, first month? It can. Normally, though, it means either the 10th day of the first month or the first day of the 10th month. Yeah, and 216, but could it be Nashville's warning on June 21st? It could. Um, that's, not, that's not impossible. Um, now we know the first day of the 10th month and the first day of the first month are connected in the story of Ezra chapter 10, where they're going to divorce from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. That's where the divorce proceedings occur. Um, okay. So let's, let's take a look at some of this. We got to get some of this down on this line. So we're going to say that this darkness uh, here, we're going to place uh, Judges 15 uh, or Judges 5 verse 14 uh, here in this darkness. Right? And we're going to say 14 to 18. Okay, that's what we've, we've suggested. So this is referring to this movement in this sort of 
fractured state. Now, we're going to have to put where the first angel arrives as well, but, but we're going to just say that this is uh, what this is referring to. Now, what are the names of the tribes and the names of the people involved, and what symbols have we got from the gematria? So we're going to say we got Deborah, and we're going to put her number. It's uh, H. One six eight three. So we'll just do this in an organized way. Barack. What's his uh, number? It was what was Barack's number? Thirteen oh one. Okay, thirteen. Right, thirteen oh one. So that's was extremely important. <laughs> And, and we see we see both of those represent these periods of time. This one here, Deborah, is um, 168 times 3, which equals 504, which when divided by 2 equals 252. Okay. Now, Barack... This is that period of time. It's, um, uh, does anybody remember specifically what that period of time refers to? It has a number of characteristics regarding it. It goes from the first day of the first month in 1533 to the first day of the fifth month in 2030. Was that the man account, the 14,000 something? No, 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 no. This is, this is a, um, This is just the period of time from the first day of the first month in 1533 when we first get the calendar to April 5th, 2030, which is the first day of the first month. So we're just counting a period of um, of years, which is 3,562 years. If you divide it by two, you get... Um, a hundred and uh, seventeen hundred and and eighty one years, right? And one seven eight and one eight seven are are both in that uh, symbol if you do it reverse and backwards. And one seventy eight and one eighty seven equal three sixty five. So it's also uh, the two hundred and twelfth. Um, Prime one three zero one is the two hundred and twelfth prime number. So so we have all of those symbols attached here. So with Barack, you got this, right? A lot of symbol. I need to do this. Comes in here. Okay, does this kind of make sense? And this number, um, three, or, oh, pardon me, one, three, zero, one, um, 
is the 212th prime. Okay, so, so we've got a lot of things here uh, dealing with this. So lots of things with these people's names. Now, we also have the different tribes. So what are the tribes that are listed and the gematria for those tribes? So we're going to have... I can't remember. Benjamin, uh, Ephraim, Manasseh. Uh, Issachar, okay, can you name them out for me? Because I'm not looking at the verse, if anybody's looking at the verse. Okay, Benjamin, Issachar, Manasseh, of course, that's going to be Makir. And then there's Reuben. Right, Reuben. And Gilead. And Dan. And Asher. Okay. Um, so we got, who else was it? Dan and Asher. Okay. I still didn't hear that. We hit we, after Reuben was, was Dan. Gilead. Gilead. Dan. Gilead. Okay. We had Dan, Gilead, Asher. Asher. No, Gilead is not one of the sons. It's just a place. But, and, and any other ones? Zebulun, Napatili, Naphtali, Naphtali. No, so not all that's, the tribes. That's all I'm seeing. So there's no Gad, there's no Simeon, there's no Judah. I didn't see any of those. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, but Gilead. Is Dan is, uh, is is Gad or what is Gilead? Okay, Gilead is a son of Makir. Okay, so that just goes along with Makir, right? So I'll put yeah. So what I should have done so. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to put Gilead there just as a separate name. But it's just I want the tribe of Manasseh. So this is also of the tribe of Manasseh. So I could put Gilead as Manasseh too, right? So Manasseh is represented twice in that sense. Well, if you're going by the uh, Makar, Makir, yeah, that would be the one, right? And and Gilead the second. Yeah, so Gilead's just it doesn't matter the order or anything, but yeah, Gilead is the son of Makir, descendant of Makir. And but they're both descendants of Manasseh. Is that how you spell Manasseh? I think you're correct. Okay. Okay, so Ephraim, you would have that as Hebrew 669. Okay. Yeah. Makir, Hebrew 4353. Okay. Benjamin, Hebrew 1144. Yeah, so we get the 144,000 symbol there. Right. Zebulun. Hebrew, 2074. Okay. 
Issachar, Hebrew, 3485. Reuben, Hebrew, 7205. Yeah. That's interesting, too, because here is here's Reuben being mentioned in consecutive verses. Yeah. Okay, Gilead, Hebrew, 1568. Dan. That was Gilead that was? That was, that was Gilead, 1568. Yeah. Okay, and Dan? Hebrew, 1835. Asher, Hebrew, 836. Zebulun, Hebrew, 2074. Yeah, and then Naphtali? Hebrew, 5321. Okay, so, and what about Manasseh? He's not named in this verse. Right. Um, okay. Make sure I got the name spelled right to Manasseh. I'm not sure if it's an E or an A there in the middle. M A N A S S E H. You've got it okay. right. Okay. Okay. Manasseh, Hebrew, 4519. Okay. okay. So we got, we got there. Now, what about the Gematria? So, um, So we got with each of these names, there's there's different things that are significant, right? Not every single number is significant in these names that I know of. Uh, but if we look at, like, I guess we could go through them methodically. So Benjamin, um, his combined gematria is 216. So we'll just say say that that's there's there's other numbers in there uh, like sixty eight is the normal reverse is one forty eight combined they're two sixteen and the differential is eighty but you know we're not going to write all of these in there um, so we'll just focus on the ones that that become the most significant for each of them so here we're having. We'll just call it G, uh, and we'll call it GC combined. Maybe we'll just go combined. We'll know it's Gematria. Is 216, right? So that's going to be February 16th symbol there. Okay. How are you getting that number? Hmm? What, how am I getting these? Yeah, I don't understand how you got that number. It's right here. This is the Gematria calculator. It takes the letters of the name and it attaches E is five, F is the 16th letter of the alphabet, H is the eighth. It adds them together, gives you a number. It also- Okay, I'm not seeing in my- should be right on your screen. It's not on my screen, it's blank. Because I shared it. There it's it on is. There it is. Yeah, okay. So there you see it. And then you can see it does the reverse sum. Here it shows 11, 9, right? That is seven, and 70 plus 11, 9 is 189. 11, 9 minus 70 is 49. So uh, the main one that I that I that 
that we looked at here was the reverse sum. Um, so that's what we're going to uh, put here um, in this, this line. We'll just say the reversed sum. So the reverse sum is 11.9. Now, Makir is going to have Gematria as well. Um, here he has the combined is 162, so that's the 16th of February. All right, so you see how we're doing this? Are you familiar with the Palmoni webpage, dear? No. Palmoni.org. Okay. Yeah, and it'll it'll have different lots of different things on there. And then it's very a, useful uh, tools. And so Issachar, the combined is two one six. So these are not very likely things to happen, by the way. Ruben is 16.2 combined. But if you look at that with the normal sum, that's kind of interesting. Um, with Ruben, that it's 65. <laughs> yeah. 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 The symbol that we're focusing on right now that we see, though, is we, we see two primary symbols, the 11.9 and the 216 that show up in the... What about that 16.2 one? Well, that's what I'm saying. 16.2 is the same as 216. Which is the 6 times 6 times 6. Right. 6 times but 6. February times 16th. February 16th. And 16.2 is the 16th of February. Right. Right. So we have the same symbol, just in, in a different order. order. Right. Right. But we have it just in those names there. That's what we have. And then we have Dan. Um, now with Dan, we have um, an interesting reverse product. We don't have the 216 per se. So we do have 81, symbol for midnight, and the 774. Now we also have the 19. So we have Ruben had 65. And Dan is 19 as the normal sum. And do any of the other names have a 46? Uh, not that I've seen. Okay. Because it's interesting that the judge would have the normal sum at 19. Yeah. Yeah. So we got, uh, so here we'll just put uh, the two for him, the normal sum and the reverse product, because both of those are interesting. Um, uh, so that was 19, whoops, right. and we had, uh, the product, uh, was 7774, right? Is that right? Right. Yeah. So that's, well, that's the reverse product, pardon me. 
first product. Okay, and then we had Gilead. So let me put that in there. Okay, so we didn't get finished here yet. Time is up. Uh, and again, Gilead is 162 as the combined. We'll finish this here and then we'll. Which is the, this is the numbers again, 216. Yeah, yeah. February 16th. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to have this. Okay, but <clears throat> you've got a misspell. Where? It's not G L I, it's G I L. It doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> it's just those letters. Yes, I see. I, I type dyslexically, but whether you put the letters in that order or not, it doesn't matter. It'd just be seven plus nine plus 12 instead of seven plus 12 plus nine. Right. Okay. The products as well. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You, you could put those. It the, might change the product. No, it doesn't, it doesn't change the product. It doesn't change anything. I can just show you that here. It, it's, it's interesting that the normal sum is um, 38. Yeah, the normal sum is 38. But anyway, you see there, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't matter which order you multiply numbers in. Okay. And then we have uh, the next one is, what, was, what did we do after Gilead? Asher, that's what we're doing next, Asher. So with Asher, we don't have anything other than 84, which is, uh, that's the reverse sum. I'm gonna put that one in there because I think it's significant. And then Zebulun. And Zebulun, we're going to have the reverse sum of 88 and the normal sum of 101. The significance of 84, would that be 42 seven times double? Seven times 12. Seven times 12. It's, it's also 42 doubled. Yes. Which is 42, 42 is months. Significant. That's 40, 40 in two months. months. Yeah. And then Naphtali, we have the 81 and the 216. I mean, we probably could put like all of these things in here and, and put them together in some way, but. Well, I tried adding up the numbers for the Hebrew numbers and came up with a, a funny figure. What was it? Um, 31,474. That was adding all the numbers of the the Hebrew numbers together of, of all these, those names, including Manasseh. Um, I don't, I can't see it. What was the number? 
Manasseh's number? 4519. Uh, 4519. No, it's not in there. Okay. Plus that, huh? If you want Oops. to. Four two one nine, you said. Yeah. And then Manasseh is also two one six. So that's uh, total is thirty five six ninety three. Numbers so don't have any meaning to me now. Okay, so one of the things you'll see here if you zoom into this. So we can see that of all these tribes here, we have Benjamin's 216, Issachar's 216, Naphtali's 216, and Manasseh's 216. Right? That's so what we've uh, come up with. Now, all of the ones that are 216, um, these are all related, right? That is, in what way are they related? Deborah lives in Ephraim. Or wait, what, what am I here? What's, what's the other one? Okay, so we have Issachar. Um, forget all that. We just look at this for right now. We'll, we'll analyze this later. And then we also have this, the 162s. So we have three of them that that are 162s and four of them that are two two one sixes. And what are the odds? Oh my goodness. Yeah. And all of these are combined gematrias. Notice that? Yes, I do. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. So that's now how likely that is. I mean, I could probably figure it out statistically. <laughs> particles in the universe thing again. Uh, well, no, I don't think it's particles in the universe. Um, yeah. Yeah. Reason I brought up that 38 is because the anointed at Lambert Church one year. What's that? I don't there know. It was 38 that was, was anointed at Lambert Church one year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's significant. 38 does have a significance, but you know, I don't know how to apply it to this line. But anyway, that's what we have here, so we need to close with prayer. But you can see that this is, is highly unlikely. And, and, and the ones that we didn't deal with, uh, Deborah and Barak, we should actually do. Because Deborah is also 216, I think. De no, it's not. Pardon me. Deborah is 189. The, the other one that shows up all the time is 189, and I'm not sure why. Um, and then uh, and then Barack. So we'll, we'll deal with those later. Anyway, we should close with prayer. We'll come back to this tomorrow. <clears throat> uh, dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study here this morning. We pray for your blessing upon each person. Throughout this day, may your angels watch over us. May your Holy Spirit speak to us and may we hearken. Uh, thank you for the things you show us in your word. Help us to understand their significance. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Theodore.